don't avoid whatever topic you're afraid of and have been avoiding. The minute I said that, something popped into your head. I know it did. I want you to go and do a little bit of research. Maybe it is ask a friend, hey, do you know an expert in this area that maybe I could spend 30 minutes paying them for their time to educate me about this so I can stop being so afraid of it. Today, we're talking all about how to protect your social media presence with Jamie Lieberman. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your business? Then welcome to Wingnut Social, helping home professionals, industry influencers, and creatives accelerate their business through an improved social media presence by translating digital influence into physical success. Whether your focus is interior design, travel and tourism, or hospitality, this is your social media tightly fastened. Now welcome the hosts of Wingnut Social, Darla Powell and Natalie Graff. Hey there, and welcome to Wingnut Social. I am your host, the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut, Darla Jethro Powell. And I am not joined again by my emotional support ginger, Natalie Ann Giraffe. She is out doing Amish things with the farm, helping her family with the throngs of people who are drooling over cinnamon rolls as they're having issues over there and, and need her to help out with the uh, berry farm. So I will not have her to be a foil for me today again on the podcast. And I have to tell you, it's taken me a hot minute to get get used to this by myself in here. I hear an echo in the room and it's it's there's a rhythm that I'm used to that this is totally kind of throwing my game off, but I'm going to do my best. And thank you for sticking with me. Today, I wanted to give you guys, before we get into our interview with Jamie Lieberman, just one quick hot tip for Instagram. When people come over to us at Wingnut Social and they ask about tips and tricks to get more engagement, get more followers, get better reach with their Instagram accounts, one of the biggest questions that they ask is, what kind of images tend to do best on Instagram? So there is an answer for that. And I'll tell you what, it might come as a surprise to you because I'm sure you guys see a lot of close-up shots, a lot of vignette shots. But here at Wingnut Social, what we have found that does best, best performing post overall for anything, and you'll see that we pretty much only post these for Wingnut Social and our clients, are whole room shots. Room shots of the entire situation there. Now, vignettes and close-ups are great if you're starved for content and you're looking for images to post and at DPI with the pandemic, my design firm, Darla Powell Interiors, we've posted a few of those because we are a little short of photo shoots this year with the whole cootie situation of 2020, which is the shit show of 2020. Can I get an amen for that? <laughs> right. But you'll find posting pictures of just a chair or just a vase or vase, as they say it down here in, in the south. In the south, that's a vase. Or is it a vase? Wait, do I have that back backwards? <laughs> no, I think I'm right. Don't do as well in your engagement and your reach as just an overall gorgeous picture of an entire designed space, well shot and well lit. So try that. Try some vignettes, try some full room shots, and see what's getting you better traction and better engagement. Of course, there's a whole bunch of other factors that go into that and how you write your captions, your hashtags. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But if you're just talking about images and quality and what does best on social, on Instagram in particular... There is your tip for the day. Day, 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 day. Okay, you guys, so let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Jamie Lieberman is the owner and founder of Hashtag Legal. She has been a practicing attorney for nearly 15 years. Prior to founding Hashtag Legal, Jamie worked for a large international law firm in New York City as a commercial litigator and for a federal district judge on both civil and criminal federal cases. Ooh, that's pretty impressive. I'm a former cop, so seeing that, I'm like, woo, respect, mad respect. Jamie has also worked for an influencer network as the director of operations and chief counsel overseeing national influencer marketing campaigns and conferences. With clients covering all areas of design, intellectual property, technology, art, and the influencer space, both Lieberman and her firm are well-versed in the struggles, potential pitfalls, and there's quite a few, and legal hangups that haunt both startups and small creative-based businesses as well. Jamie is also a co-author with me in Luann Naguera's upcoming book, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Experts, Volume Dose, Volume 2. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Jamie Lieberman to the Wingnut Social Podcast. Hey there, Jamie Lieberman. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? 
I'm hanging in. It's, you know, it's 2020. So what's the right answer to that? I'm not sure. <laughs> right, the right answer is 2020 is a say it with me <laughs> show. <laughs> I think I've told the audience before on on some levels, 2020 has been a, a real blessing, right? It's been a real challenge and a real struggle, but I see a lot of growth coming from this year into 2021. We can all only emerge stronger and better. That's a way to spin it, right? Yes, that's all we got. <laughs> yeah, let's spin it. <laughs> so since you're a big legal eagle and a big legal knowledge person, and I'm a social media person, we thought it'd be great to marry the two and talk about legality and your social media influencer marketing, which is something that I don't think we've talked about yet. We have not touched base on this at all. So this is what we're going to discuss today. Are you game? Absolutely. One of my favorite topics. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Because I did see I was reading in your bio that you used to work with influencer marketing. That was pretty cool. I didn't see that coming. I actually started working in the space. I don't even want to say influencer marketing space, but I started working when people were just called bloggers. The word influencer didn't even exist at the time when my law practice started. So it's been a really cool ride to watch it change. Oh, wow. So back when the dinosaurs, like you had the T-Rex Insta account. Correct. <laughs> I actually had, I was telling someone today, I had a live journal, if we remember those, and a blog spot. What was the live journal? Refresh my recollect. Oh my, it's exactly what it sounded like. It was just people like journaling online pre-blog. So basically a video, like a Facebook Live or something. No, it was um, typing. We didn't have videos back then. This was like 15, 20 years ago. We were, we were not videoing. Nobody was looking good on video. Yeah, no, it was just people sort of typing a blog. There were like no photos. You just sort of typed out your thoughts and feelings on nonsense. And, and then those turned into blogs. You know, I kind of think I remember WordPress used to be big for that, I think, right? Starting and I had a blog. I was doing CrossFit at the time. Mm. And I did something about CrossFit and how I ripped my shoulder doing CrossFit and I hated CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> and it got a ton of traction. I still get emails every now and then from that. I had a blog on a blog spot, which was like, I don't even know if blog spots exist anymore. It was Google's product a very long time ago about living in New York City that actually got really popular for some time, but it doesn't exist anymore because I moved and I wasn't fun anymore. So <laughs> it just didn't seem relevant. So I shut it down. But it was fun. Are you saying attorneys aren't fun? No, I'm not. Actually, I am 100% saying that. I'm just the exception. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are. You definitely make the legal topic fun. Thank you. I watch your videos on Instagram and everything. And we actually, we did an Instagram live recently because you and I are both co-authors in Luann Naguerre's upcoming book. I got to take a deep breath before I say it. A Well-Designed Business Power Talk Friday Experts Volume 2. <laughs> tell us before we get into the social media legalities, tell us a little bit about your chapter and what people are going to learn by picking up Luann's book and reading your chapter. So I wrote all about contracts, which I know everybody stopped listening, but don't. I promise we've made it more. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's <laughs> asleep now. I'm sorry. It is like a unisom. But um, we need it, though. We need yes. it. Yes. So I created a chapter for Luann all about the types of clauses that you want to make sure you have in your design services agreement. Not only did I explain what they are, what they mean, but we give real life examples of how they actually can benefit your business or on the alternative, sometimes how they go wrong. And then as a bonus, because negotiation is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart, I added in some negotiation tips. Nice. I have to tell you, almost with every other client I sign, we add something to our contract. <laughs> We're learning it the hard way. So I can't wait to read your chapter. And then maybe we can just stop doing that. Just have something solid in place. And it's almost like a living thing. It's like a living, breathing organism. It is. <laughs> and I say that all the time. And I love that you say that because whether or not you have an attorney work on it or you do it yourself or somewhere in between, your contract will always change. It lives like and it should. And that's a great approach to it. You know, the first time I changed the contract is my very, actually my very first client had this huge cane corso, which I don't know if you're familiar, but it's a dog breed and they're kind of aggressive. And he was 120 pounds. Oh, wow. And she just kind of let him loose in the house while my subs were working and he chased them <laughs> <laughs> and they had to lock themselves into a bathroom. And from then on, my contracts have stated something to the fact that pets needed to be contained. And, you know, <laughs> we actually have that clause when I work with designers, I put that in because of that. That and extreme messes is another really interesting one because sometimes you'll walk into a home and you've maybe met someone, but you haven't seen their house and you're like, I, there's nothing I can do in here. 
<laughs> I have to go <laughs> clean it up and then I'll come back. So we, we definitely have, or somebody's like really, really sick and hacking up a lung. And you're like, I'm not going to come into your home while you clearly have a very bad cold or I'll come back. I have a, a television producer that I'm working with on a project, maybe, maybe not, who is actually a co-producer on the show Hoarders. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> And he told me if I see anything in my travels to let him know. So if, if you want to share <laughs> with him after the show, we'll get the notes from you. Okay, let's dig into social media. I could talk to you forever, but let's talk about the topic at hand, which is legality, legal terms in place for social media. First of all, when people think about social media and posting to social media, I'm thinking that the legality of it is the last thing. So where do we start? Why is it so important for small business owners to have legal terms in place for their social media? So I think the important thing is to think about what you're doing with your social media and what it is for you and your business, whether or not it is your whole business, i.e. you are a content creator or an influencer of some kind, or you're using it as a marketing tool for your business, you're going to look at social media differently. And social media obviously is vast. It can be anything from Instagram to Facebook to TikTok. Oh, TikTok. I love TikTok. Everybody loves TikTok, <laughs> um, although no one's figured out how to make money from it yet, but give them time. YouTube is another one. The biggest thing that we're thinking about is what content am I creating? Who's creating it and who owns it? So if you're creating it yourself and you've made it and you've posted it, then you own it. But if a contractor is creating it for you, you need to make sure that you are still the owner of it. And then if you're utilizing other people's content, making sure that you have permission. So everything I've really just mentioned there is intellectual property, copyright. And so having sort of a basic understanding of copyright, I'm not saying you need to be a lawyer, but just a general understanding of the rules is helpful if you're going to create content. I love that. And so what do you say to people who have their content? Because social media is essentially a sharing medium, mm -hmm. right? That's how things go viral. That's how people get famous. That's how people grow their accounts. That's how they become influencers. What do you say to people that are sharing inspirational posts, but are giving 100% proper credit to the, the photographer, the stager, the designer, and making that post about them? Because I'll tell you, I built my Darla Powell Interiors account that way incredibly successfully. And everybody whose images I shared, you know, in, in good faith and crediting has thanked me and said, thank you so much for sharing. They gained followers. I gained followers. It was a win-win situation. Tell us a little bit about that. I love this question. Okay, good. I have to say, don't hurt me too much because we use that at Wingnut. So <laughs> there's two sides to this answer. So the first very lawyerly answer is you are not allowed to share anybody's content that mm -hmm. you do not have permission to share. Okay. And attribution is not the same as permission. So I do want people to be really clear on that, that just because you give attribution does not necessarily mean that you have permission. Um, and so I do hear that a lot. And there's a lot of confusion there. If you want to use somebody else's content, my recommendation is always to ask them, hey, I love that post. Can I share it? Now, there is obviously sharing that you can do within the social media channels. Like, you know, if you love somebody's post on Instagram, you can share it in your stories using their sharing tools. That's fine. And that is allowed. What a lot of people unfortunately do is they will like copy and paste somebody else's and then they'll put the attribution in, in an original post. If you'll notice, Instagram doesn't actually let you repost somebody else's content in a new post static post. Um, and there's a reason for that. So you just have to be really careful about how you're using somebody else's content. And the easiest way to be careful of that is to just ask for permission. Like you said, it benefits most people. So a lot mm -hmm. of times people are really happy about it. But if you catch the wrong person, particularly <laughs> um, photographers are very sensitive to this because frankly, it happens to them all the time. That their photos get shared or used without permission. Many of them are not standing for it anymore and they will make monetary damages demands. Those are the get off my lawn people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's the last thing you want to be dealing with. <laughs> All right. So what we do at Wingnut is we use a, a branded hashtag, even for clients. We'll say, we really enjoy this post. Is it okay for us to share this? And we ask them for permission that way. So that is how we use the user-generated content for Wingnut Social. But back in the beginning, I'm telling you, Darla Palantir's, as long as it was properly credited, I had no issues. And 99 times out of 100, you're not going to get that get off my lawn person, but it is good to know what the risks are. Exactly. 
exactly. for doing that for sure. So I, I, I hear that 100%. Yeah. If you stumble on that wrong person, it, it can be painful. So I get just, off my lawn. Yeah. I mean, I had a case where I had a client who had a Facebook page. It was a huge Facebook page. It wasn't monetized at all, but there was a million people in this page. And he picked up a photo that he posted and gave attribution. And we had a very long protracted fight over it. You know, he didn't make any money off of it. He wasn't doing it for anything other than to say, hey, this is a beautiful photo. So, you know, that like you said, that's one out of a hundred. And I don't want everyone to run and be afraid. But my recommendation is to avoid that and to minimize that risk is like you said, just ask for permission. Home pros, interior designers is a large majority of our audience. And some of them don't really care about becoming influencers. They just want that next client working through the door. But a whole hell of a lot of them want to become influencers in the space, want to get deals, want to get brand collaborations. And that's not just, yeah, okay, let me post your product and let me get paid. I imagine there's some nitty gritty behind that as well. Can you give some advice in that arena? So there's lots of different ways that I guess I'll say content creators or designers can partner with a brand. It can be anything from a one-off where, like you said, you know, we create some content, you get paid for it, you post it, um, to longer, more organic relationships where you're an ambassador of some kind. Sometimes you'll appear on your own channels. Sometimes you'll appear on their channels. And so it is definitely more favored if you can get into that long time relationship, because then you'll obviously have a few large relationships versus constantly having to look for new relationships that are one-offs. And they can really be anywhere from sometimes they're trades where, you know, if a designer really wants to work with the brand and the brand will provide product and then the, the designer will somehow get to use that product to actual money that changes hands. And it really just depends on your engagement, how well you can negotiate, what your goals are. Because I've had clients that have literally gotten full kitchen remodels. So, I mean, their entire kitchens have been redone by a brand. And so for them, it was well worth it because the value of that's very, very high, but no dollars actually changed hands. Although I will note that you are taxed on any kind of income like that. So it's yeah. not like it's free. <laughs> so I think you have to think about my recommendation to anybody who's trying to sort of break into that is what am I looking for? What are my goals? Am I just looking for you know money because I want to enter into these deals and become a spokesperson? Or am I looking to have some strategic relationships because it'll look good and it'll be influential? And what does that look like? So I think your compensation can really vary based on what your goals are. And is that something you do at Hashtag Legal is help negotiate those deals? We do. Yeah. It's actually uh, one of my favorite things to do. Okay. So can you get me a new kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before. So do it again. Another thing to talk about after the show. Another interesting thing too is, and this is a thing that many uh, creators don't realize, but licensing is actually a really, really lucrative income stream. And so like I have clients who create content and then they will license that content, whether it's a beautiful photograph that was taken to a magazine or I have clients, and I know this doesn't necessarily translate to this audience, but it's just a good example, might. who create music and they license that music to apps or you know they've licensed that music to corporations, things like that. So there's lots of different ways that you can license you know, what you're creating to other companies to make money that way too. So we do have a lot of photographers and a lot of people that even take shots of their own design work, could that be something that could be licensed? Can we break into that a little deeper? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you a great example. I have a client who created this short video. It was something that she had made. And then a company came to her and said, hey, we want to use that video in a TV show because we want the main character to be watching the video. <laughs> it was so cool. And it, she made quite a bit of money from it because um, oh, wow. it was like central to the storyline. So there's really interesting things that clients will be approached about. And th the way to get approached about that, if you don't have an agent or you're not doing anything like that, is just sort of being visible and interacting with the brands and companies that you think would be a fit for you. And those relationships can start and then they'll remember you when they need that. And that's what happened with this particular client. She just interacted with the brand that she had talked about. It wasn't a sponsored deal. And then she had continued a relationship and then eventually they were referred to the TV show and it, it's all about the relationships. Do you also do entertainment contracts? I do. Yeah. 
Okay. So how many of your clients have you seen that have gotten some like television deals or something similar just from their social media presence from being an influencer? Quite a few, actually. It's really cool. Okay. It's a neat thing to watch. I've been doing this for a while. And so many of my clients sort of started off just blogging and then went into maybe vlogging or, you know, doing a lot more video on Instagram. And then it slowly went from there. And then we've had some clients really break in and do some really incredible stuff. I had one client who went viral on TikTok and that oh. turned into a whole, yeah, that turned into a whole thing. It's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. I love that. You may be uh, looking to have you sign some contracts, hopefully next year. <laughs> we'll see what happens. What have you seen as far as follower count or micro influencers that have gotten deals with licensing? Is there a minimum number of followers that you've seen in your practice or what is the rule of thumb there? Yeah. So I'd love to say that numbers don't matter. To some brands, they're a deal breaker. So to some brands, they're going to say, I don't want anybody with less than 50,000 or 100,000. That's not all brands though. So I do want to make that really clear. And particularly some of the savvier marketing professionals who understand that some of the influencers who may have 10,000 followers have incredibly engaged followers, they're okay with that. So really, if you have less than say 100,000 followers, which I don't necessarily think is a magic number, but some people do, your engagement is really what it comes down to. Your ability to show that if you recommend something to your community, they're going to buy it. And so once you can show that, you have a lot more negotiating power. You know, I have a client who probably maybe has about 25,000 followers, but those followers, if she posts anything, they will buy it all. <laughs> and there's power to that. She has a very specific area. She has very specific followers and it works. So I think if you can keep, know your data, I think is also the other really big yeah. issue. And if you're able to show that type of engagement and case studies are huge, they're key. A lot of people miss them. And so if you, you know your data, you know your engagement, you have those case studies, they're really persuasive. My director for Wingnut Social, Shana Heinrich, and I did a webinar earlier this year on how to become an influencer in 2020, the <laughs> show of 2020. Ooh. And that was one of the things that we did point out, just have case studies, show how you've managed campaigns and what the results were and what your engagement rate is. And I've had companies and brands reach out to me for influencer status, and that's what they do ask. They already see what my followers are, but they want to know what my reach is, what my engagement rate is, and all that stuff. So I think that is changing. It's not so much a numbers game. Micro-influencers are getting a lot more attention in the marketing industry. Yeah, for sure. I also think that if you do have the opportunity to engage with a brand, and even if they don't ask you for a case study, create one anyway and send it to them, they will remember you. Yeah, it's super important. We do that at Wingnut Social too for our clients here, our marketing clients. And people that come to me don't ask for them, but I'm like, look at how amazing we yeah, are. Yeah, <laughs> that's powerful. It is when you see this is what we've been able to do for a client. Or if you show a brand, if you show Curry and Company, listen, this is a campaign I did with this lighting or these these case goods and look at all the interest I got in that. Look at what I could do for your company. So 100%, just to have a, a media kit or something with that information on board. So let's say that someone's out there and they have, noticed that someone is using their images with no attribution, no credit, no nothing. What recourse do they have to get that taken down by the offending count? It depends on a couple of things. If you are the owner of the image, you have the absolute right to require that someone remove the image, even if you have not registered a copyright with the U.S. Copyright Office. So by its nature, when you create an original work and you've created it, and you've actually created it. So you took the picture. You didn't just think about it, but you actually took the picture. So with a photograph, if once you've taken it, it's yours, you're the, we're going to presume you're the copyright owner, you can then request that they take it down. Okay. And what would you recommend for them? Would you just say, hey, just a quick DM or an email saying, hey, would you mind? Or I'd start there. Go balls to the wall and hire, <laughs> you know, some high-end attorney costing millions of dollars. Yeah. So we don't all cost a million dollars, by the way. But yes. So <laughs> my recommendation, I am very much a proponent of let's be friends. I like collaborative negotiation. So all of my clients and anyone who comes to me, I recommend, unless there's something, some contentious background, I say, go reach out without me because the minute you involve me, everything like becomes really ugly. So, which I hate. I mean, I don't want it to be that way, but unfortunately many lawyers do. So my recommendation is just try to get them to take it down if that's all you're looking for. Many people want money though. They like to go the invoice route or they, they're angry that they're, <sighs> yes. So, and I get that. I understand that. 
I can see if it's done without attribution for sure. Yeah. And so if your goal, and you know, I always say this to clients, you have to think about like, what's your end goal? If you just want them to take it down, then absolutely reach out. You can also file something called a DMCA, which is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, a DMCA takedown notice. All the social media networks have the ability to do it. You just Google it. And if you own copyright protected material and somebody's using it without your permission, you can file a takedown notice also with a website host. So if a website scrapes your content or is utilizing your content in a way, you can go to the website host and you can request that they pull it down. Sometimes that's the more effective way uh, because it just gets it done. But like I said, no money is changing hands here. You're just, your sole goal is to get your content removed. If you're looking for some kind of monetary damages it is more difficult to get monetary damages without copyright registration. If you have a copyright registration, meaning you've registered the work with the copyright office and you have a valid registration certificate, then you may be eligible for certain damages. And at that point, you could either send that demand yourself or you can reach out to your million dollar lawyer um, and ask them to help you. (laughs) But really, at the end of the day, you have just have to think about like, how much conflict do I want? What am I really looking for? And what's most important to me? And that's a personal judgment call. My recommendation, though, is your intellectual property is only is as strong as you're willing to protect it. So if you do see that somebody is infringing on your intellectual property, at minimum, I do recommend either asking for attribution, if that's going to make you most comfortable, or asking them to take it down. Yeah. And I actually had a meeting with an IP attorney not too long ago. And he, that's what he was saying, that if you have it registered with a, a legit copyright, I, f- I forget where, <laughs> where it is, you don't remind me there, then you have way more of a shot of actually getting some kind of monetary compensation than if you just say, oh, that's my photo. Yes, that's right. And without it registered. Yeah. And I don't know how many people are running around short of being a professional photographer registering their images. I know none of these interior designers listening probably are, but right. just so you keep that in mind, if you have dollar signs in your eyes, then that probably isn't going to play out. <laughs> Unless you decide to go the route of registration. Yeah. Are you familiar with Facebook's new policy about people being able to claim uh, that copyright image copyright? Yeah, I actually- actually did a, a live with Social Media Marketing World about that, the whole manager. Yes. So there is the new manager where you can upload your content and then Facebook is sort of using, a, I guess, AI to sort of, you know, scan and you can claim ownership of it. You can make them take it down. It does require work though. You have to upload yes. all your photos a, and videos. A ton. Yeah. So, um, but it's a, it's a great tool and I'm glad Facebook is doing it. I think essentially Facebook is trying <laughs> to... I think they're trying. Well, yeah. they're trying, but they're also trying to avoid all the DMCA takedown notices. <laughs> Because then they have to get involved. Business of Home interviewed me for an article about this. And I was like, well, I think it's a step in the right direction. But I, it's so convoluted. The steps and everything they have to do, I don't know how practical it's going to be. So time will tell. Time will tell. And see, I haven't heard of anyone using it. I haven't seen of anyone using it. And, you know, I'm in the industry. But who knows? I'm sure for bigger cases, you know, and stuff, it's, it's going to be way more effective than just the random solopreneur. I think, again, it depends on your end game and your goals and the importance you put on protecting those images and those videos. I do believe, and I really think it's really smart to have at least a strategy session with an attorney that can help you sit down and really set forth your goals and what's important to you and where you want to put your time, effort, and energy and money. We do that too at Wingnut Social. I mean, not from a legal standpoint so much, but from our our discovery, our deep dive with going into the businesses and finding out what is your end goal as far as an ROI from your social, because there's different approaches there as well. So yeah, it's important to have a business plan going in and not just throwing stuff up on uh, social and hoping it sticks. Yes, agreed. So let's talk about the future of social media. Do you still see it being a wild, wild west or do you think it's going to be, (laughs) you think it's going to be tamer than it is now? Or do you think it's all the fun is getting sapped out with all this, all these buzzkills and get off my lawn people? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I love this question. It's funny. I am on the board of directors of a nonprofit called the Influencer Marketing Association that has really dedicated itself to the ethics of influencer marketing. And we've been at it for a couple of years and I still see it as a wild, wild west. (laughs) They're (laughs) trying very hard. Many um, organizations are trying very hard. It's so massive and it's so platforms. I mean, think about it. I mean, 
we were talking about TikTok now. We were talking about Periscope. Nobody's mentioned that in a long time. Uh, you know, wah, these, wah, wah. right? <laughs> these platforms come and go. And certainly you're going to have the, you know, the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but new ones pop up all the time. Um, so it's really hard to have a set sort of standard that when you have so many different companies, I do think that the more people understand it and get into it, the more savvy an influencer can be. So I'm really big on education and I'm really big on making yourself aware of the issues that are specific to your business. So it's kind of like the more you know... (laughs) Is really, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's really true though. It education takes away fear. Information takes away fear and knee-jerk reactions. And so your business may be very different than your friend's business. And while it is awesome to have like a business crew, at the end of the day, you need to know what your business goals are, what is good for you. And the more people get that information, the savvier people become, the less of a wild west it's going to be. Awesome. Did you ever watch the Wild Wild West? I don't think you're as old as I am, but remember that show? Was it back in the 60s or the 70s? I do not know. Okay. All right. You're clearly younger than I am. All right. (laughs) A little bit, I think. All right, Jamie, before we get into the What Up Wingnut round, what is one thing, just one takeaway that a small business owner listening can go off and do today on their own to feel more secure in their social media marketing efforts? For me, it's gathering of information. Don't avoid whatever topic you're afraid of and have been avoiding. So each person that's listening, the minute I said that, something popped into your head. I know it did, right? I'm a business owner too. I get it. Um, And so whatever that one thing is that popped into your head as I'm talking, I want you to go and do a little bit of research, whether it's not necessarily Googling because Googling can make us afraid, but maybe it is ask a friend, hey, do you know an expert in this area that maybe I could spend 30 minutes paying them for their time to educate me about this so I can stop being so afraid of it. I love it. Yeah, I'm reading this book. I don't know if you've heard of it, but one of our, our Jared Hanning was a recent guest who's called The War of Art. I don't know if you're familiar by Stephen Pressfield. Oh, I've heard of it. It's really good. Things that you're afraid of and you don't want to look at or you don't want to deal with it. He calls it resistance. Mm. It's, I think you would really enjoy it. I'm on my third listen already. And he was a guest like three weeks ago. So <laughs> yeah, very, very impactful. All right. Jamie Lieberman, now I have to ask you, are you ready? I'm ready. For the What Up Wingnut round. Ah, I'm ready. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wingnut. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? (sighs) So when I was a kid, my grandmother had this massive willow tree in her backyard. And so whenever I see a willow tree, I think of her. She's since passed. That tree just always sort of reminded me of just like childhood and freedom. And I don't know, there's something really magical to me about a willow tree. So I think I'd have to pick that. I love that. That touched the cockles of my heart. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? She did it her way. (laughs) All right. If you could only be one golden girl, who would it be and why? Oh, this is a no brainer. Dorothy. Yeah, I see that. Oh, yeah, because you're an attorney. So yeah, that makes sense. Are you sassy? Are you smart alecky? Do you have that same fashion sense? She has some killer fashion. I love it. She was awesome. She was just her own woman. I love Dorothy. She told it like it is, but she was a really warm and good friend. I love that. Terrific answer. And last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a a profound effect on you either personally or professionally. I like this one. Okay. So I'm an avid reader. I read constantly. And the book that comes into my head, so my icon and my hero is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is just... She was, um, I mean, I don't even know. I don't have words for it, but she wrote a book, My Own Words. It's her autobiography and it's awesome. So I highly recommend My Own Words. My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, what, another addition to the show year of 2020. <laughs> it takes a yeah. lot to crack me. I won't lie. That one broke me a little bit. Yeah, I think it broke a lot of people. Yeah. You're not alone. She's awesome. Besides uh, your upcoming appearance in the Luann Nagara's Power Talk Friday Experts Volume 2 book <laughs> with me, yours truly, please tell the Wingnuts where they can find you and what you have coming up. Awesome. So my law firm is called Hashtag Legal, and we work with clients in lots of different verticals, including interior designers, creators. We do work in the influencer marketing space, and we work in all kinds of areas like contracts, which is what I wrote my chapter about intellectual property, privacy, website terms, all kinds of good stuff. So you can find me at hashtag all spelled out dash legal.com. 
On Instagram, which is my favorite social media channel, we are hashtag spelled out underscore legal. And like you said, we do create a lot of content, lots of videos, and we try to provide like really small tidbits of information. So not to overwhelm, because as you can tell, I'm really big on education. And we just launched a series of course offerings called the Unbusiness School, where we... (laughs) I I love that. (laughs) Thank you. We launched five courses about five different legal topics. They are like you know, short videos with downloads, really to give you legal foundations on contracts and trademarks and copyright. So if you're just like not even sure where to start and you're like, I don't even know what to ask, (laughs) what questions to even ask. (laughs) And if one of those topics popped into your head when I asked that question earlier, Young Business School would be a great place to look for some resources. And you can find that on my website too. Sounds amazing. I am definitely going to check out your chapter because I know Darla Palantirs need some contract help. And I could use some influencer help. Let's talk about that after we hang up here. (laughs) Sounds awesome. (laughs) All right, Jamie, thank you so much for joining me. We really appreciate it. You have an amazing night. Thank you. Get off my lawn. (laughs) Listen, I'm not downplaying that people are using other people's images without permission. You shouldn't do that for sure. You absolutely should have permission and at the very least tag them, sing their praises, say why this room by Waddell and Bichetti is the most amazing thing you ever saw. And they will thank you for sharing because they're growing their account. Social media is sharing, but Jamie did spell it out in black and white. You have to be careful of the risks there. If you're not explicitly going to the person and saying, hey, this photo is bitchin'. It would it be okay if I shared it? And they're always going to say yes. Very, very rarely are they going to say no. If they say no, they really, they are sitting in front of their house <laughs> with a grand Torino in the driveway and they look like Clint Eastwood and you know what comes next. So I'm really looking forward to Jamie's chapter in Luann Nigera's book about contracts because even though we do have our systems and processes locked down, right, there's always something, there's always something you can do better with your contracts. And I tell you what, when I have people that reach out to me As an interior decorator here in Miami, Florida, to mentor them or give them advice, one of the first things they ask is about my contract. And I tell them, listen, listen, lady, you don't want my contract. (laughs) It definitely needs some improvement. And I usually refer them over to Claire Jeffords' site for contracts or, or someone like Jamie Lieberman to help them out. So go over, check out Jamie Lieberman, check out her website. You can get all this information in her book recommendation at wingnutsocial.com slash podcast. And you'll see this podcast right on the top if you're listening to this on the Wednesday that it airs, or you can just search Jamie Lieberman in the search thing there and find it. She had a lot of terrific information about social. You just want to make sure all your ducks in a row and you are protected. And if you are afraid of something, it's something that you want to put your head in the sand like an ostrich and not face it. You know, as well as I do, that if you actually sit and face it and get the education on it, when you're done with it, you're like, well, hell, that wasn't so bad. I don't know why I haven't done this, you know, in the first place. Why didn't I just do this? I I could have avoided so many problems. And you know, that's true. And I'm talking to myself. (laughs) All right, guys, thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on whatever the hell you're listening to this podcast on. Check us out at Wingnut Social on every social media channel that God has invented on this God's green earth. And if you need help with your social media marketing, head on over to wingnutsocial.com or send me an email to info at Wingnut Social, we'd be glad to help you out. And that's it for today. See ya. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only the first step into accelerating your business the Wingnut way. Head over to wingnutsocial.com or call us at 1-877-WINGNUT to see how we can help you take your business from social mediocre to social media master. We'll see you on the next episode of Wingnut Social, your social media tightly fastened. Hey there, welcome to the Social Media Marketing Podcast, Wingnut Social, that's wrong. (laughs) All right, Jamie, before we get into the what up wing, good boy, Mango.